Today's review is for the Deluxe Drive Max Megazord from Power Rangers Operation Overdrive. Sort of. Because we didn't really get the Deluxe Drive Max Megazord. We got, for the first time in the series, um, our own mold of it that was different than the Japanese mold. Which wasn't the norm back then and is kind of the norm now. So this is technically the Deluxe Gogo Gatai Daiboken, which if I said that wrong, I am sorry. Um, wasn't my intention. So still though, um, you know, this is a Drive Max Megazord because it came out in America as that. And that's how I'm going to review it. So you've got five vehicle Zords. Um, the theme of the series and both in Japan and America was treasure hunting, adventure, that kind of stuff. And these Zords facilitate that process. So you've got Dump Driver, Gyro Driver, Dozer Driver, Sub Driver, and Speed Driver. And in theory, I like this idea. I like the treasure hunting aspect. All of them sort of make sense, except for this guy. Like, I guess if you really wanted to get somewhere fast, he would come in handy, but he is a race car. And I don't really see how that is related to uh, treasure hunting, but here we are. So, um, yeah, let's kind of look at these and get started. They are vehicles, so they are kind of simple, um, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. The toy here the toy, the figure, eh, the car, the vehicle. Anyway, now that I have named every noun in the friggin' dictionary, the bucket goes up and down, which is kind of cool. You can aim the cannon around for lots of fun firing action. And there are very, very tiny wheels here. So um, this plastic bottom of the review station um, doesn't really allow for rolling that much but it does roll I promise. So a uh, speed driver here <clears throat> is very simple. He's got six wheels and they are not rubberized. Um, doesn't really do anything aside from rolling though. The detail on it's nice. I do like the gold metallic finish. Um, the bottom looks fine. This piece is for the Megazord, nothing special about this vehicle. And again, he rolls, and he rolls a bit better, and he just crashed into the dump. So, we're gonna go over here next. I like this one probably the most out of all of them, just because the submarine is cool, and it makes sense, because there's gonna be treasure underwater. So, it's pretty simple. It doesn't do anything special. It, has wheels, so you can still roll it, uh, flip it over like I just did. So again, it's not really doing it that well on this surface, but it is what it is. It has these claws, which are cool because, yeah, you could reach out and grab something, reach out and touch Faith, I don't know. Um, it's kind of disappointing that they don't open and close, but they do rotate, so, I mean, that is something. But aside from that, like, or give it like a periscope. Well, that'd be cool if that could like come up and down. And you could pretend you're Divatox in a shiny new sub. But uh, yeah. Gyro also has wheels down here. So it rolls sort of. Um, this is a super simple Zord like Racer Zord. Uh, it has cannons kind of, but they don't really move unless you've pulled out the helmet. Spoilers, the, the helmet's right there. You can flap the rotors, the turbines. I'm not an aircraft expert, so I think they're turbines. But that isn't really, I mean, you're not gonna see a hovercraft like flapping, I hope. Otherwise there might be a mechanical issue. But um, I mean, it makes sense that they would need something for air exploration, so it's fine. And then the big boy here, the dump driver. Now, there's two issues I have. One, this thing is, the whole thing is tiny, very tiny. 
Um, the American mold was apparently larger. I didn't actively collect back then. I had my collection, but I wasn't still buying stuff. I wasn't able to afford things as much or as easily as I am now back then. Um, but I remember seeing this and being like, something about that is off. Um, I didn't really care or pay attention enough to like look into it, but I didn't realize that we had deviated from the Japanese mold. I just thought it looked bad, um, which is a personal opinion. If you like how the American mold looks, that's fine. It, it is what it is. Um, but I didn't realize that the Japanese one was going to be so tiny, which I guess makes sense because of the auxiliary zords and how those function. I don't have any of them, but I've done enough research to know that I will get them eventually. Um, so this one is the biggest by a large shot and um, also the heaviest. So when it is in Megazord form, it it's what gives it the weight. So I, I wish I had a ruler around me because this I would love to see how tall this thing actually is. It is not very tall at all. But it is the only one with rubberized wheels. It's a um, very hard rubber, but they are rubber. And it holds the Zord's weapons on the side. So there's a pickaxe and there is the shovel. I believe the shovel was called the Drive Digger Shovel. And this is the Drive Max Pickaxe, which I'm not really sure they needed fancy names, but here we are. A dump truck does make sense because you've got a dozer. It's got to put the stuff it's digging out in here somewhere. So um, it rolls. It's got its four wheels. It rolls probably better than the other ones just because the wheels are large enough to like touch things. Put that in, in view for you. Touch things being the ground. Um, you can like lift it and be like, oh, it's dumping if you want some articulation from it. But I doubt many people, maybe kids would pretend, uh, you know, that it's doing stuff. So, um, but that's pretty much it. They are very simple in the, um, in their vehicle form. I'm going to move this back a little bit because it does have a neatish feature because they can combine into, um, a truck, the mega truck. Uh, the, I mean, it, it, it kind of adds some playability. It's definitely not my favorite form, but you know, I appreciate them giving us that option. I just knocked this off. So let's put this back on for now. Um, so yeah, let's start that process. The dump driver is kind of, it, it's done. You don't need to do anything to it specifically for the sub driver, I always want to say diver, diver, because um, it's a submarine. So I keep thinking of like that 3DS game. Like I think there was one called sub diver. Anyway, you take the claws and you flip them backwards. So it'll actually fit. And then you just split it in half. So this pegish piece here will go into the clip. And then there's a hole right there. And there's a little peg. I don't know if I can, if you can see it. You kind of can. It's there. So you just clip it on and in. Um, the dozer is pretty, pretty simple. Um, it basically kind of goes in on its own. Um, you will pull the bucket up a little bit, but up and back, not by much. And then you rotate this around so it can fire its cannons instead of looking backwards. On the bottom of the dump truck, which I guess you could have done this previously, but you open it up and there is, there's a peg to, or a tab, and you pull this out to like link it like a train. I do not like this, and I do not like the connection on the next part of it because it's kind of hard to do without like grabbing it and flipping it upside down or, or something and we'll get there because it just flops down so it's not like I don't know it's just not a good connection to me so you take racer here speed racer or the speed driver and you pull him back I think you know, 
helps if my fingers aren't in the way. And then you flip its front part up. Now there is the peg for this piece here. Um, you can do this after finishing it or you can do it now, which I'm gonna do it now. But like I said, it's kind of awkward. I don't feel like I should have to flip it upside down to do this. I'm good. I pulled the, the grill up. See? Now other people might be better at this than I am. I don't know. I just find it kind of weird and cumbersome and I don't like it. So there we go. It's done. And for gyro, you literally, you've got the pegs here on the helmet. You just clip it on down there and then push those down. And you get the mega truck which is, I'm assuming, supposed to be a tractor trailer. I can kind of see it. Um, it's not cohesive. I don't super like it. Why is this tiny thing pulling this giant thing? I mean, I guess that's how trucks work in real life. But this just looks so gigantic and this looks so tiny. But it does roll. Kids probably got a kick out of it. I don't know. Part of my issue with this toy in general is that I don't think it has a cohesive design. I see the theme, but I prefer them in their individual modes. I think they look fine that way, but as far as uh, in either of their combined modes, I don't think it goes together very well. So I just, it takes some effort for me to like see what they're going for here. I don't know if that's what other people think, but it's what I think, so I don't know. I don't super enjoy this. I also don't display my Zords individually, so it will be in Megazord mode when it's on my shelf. Um, but we'll get to that. We're gonna do that now, and I'll sh kind of show you what I mean about cohesion. I'm gonna take the weapons off for now, which is something about the Zord I actually do like. Um, but for this moment, we're gonna take it off. Um, Pop this back off. Oh, God, come on. Well, that sounded horrible. It just popped into place, it didn't break. Um, we're gonna take these out. Lord, they are tight. Okay. So, as this is the biggest part of, or the biggest Zord of this set, it also forms the majority of the Mega Zord, which shouldn't surprise anybody, but. There we are. So you flip these back and you pop it out and you just fold it into place. Um, split it up here. And one of the things I do like about it is that these, it's kind of a clever way to hide parts of it. This sword is also super squeaky, at least mine is. So you're probably hearing that awful sound. But I like that the kneecaps kind of fold out. It, it's kind of cool. Um, it's one of the few things like about the design here I do like. Um, before we continue though, part of my dislike is that the wheels don't go anywhere. They just stay here. They, they're they just there. They're uh, like, at least I wish they had made this to where you could pull them out and when it's in Zord mode and hide these joints, these connectors, but nope. They're just there, which these don't bother me, unless you can't see what I'm talking about. Um, these don't bother me in Megazord form because they're covered, but it's weird to just have them sticking out, but whatever. So the next part is you take this, um, let's see if I can do it right. Take this and you fold it backwards and then you push him down. So I'll show you that. Fold this over to the back and then you, uh, you drop it and you push it down and you rotate the head. So you've got 70% of the Zord right here. Um, so next piece for me is I uh, rotate this just to get out of the way and I flip the treads upwards. Um, you kinda, you've got the port here and then you put the bucket this actually it needs to point at you so uh, I believe it's like that I think 
and you fold the fist out, it might be like that, which makes kind of, makes sense, yeah, that makes more sense. So, and then you just clip it on. It's tiny, <laughs> tiny arm, but whatever. Same for this one, you fold it back into the way it was, and you take this back piece and you push it in, revealing the fist, and then these, for whatever reason, face out. So, it's kind of weird. But then they just connect. This doesn't lock into place, so it is very easy to just accidentally move it like I just did. Okay, so let's remove gyro. These don't latch on, so they're super easy to just pull up. Drop him off to the side. And you've basically got the finished piece here, which is whatever. So you pull these pegs out though, these clips. They're not really clips. I don't really understand their purpose unless I'm missing something. But there is a peg hole right there. And then there's a peg here. And you just snap it on. It kind of feels like a lesser version of the armor idea of um, the Thunder Megazord from season two of Power Rangers, but nothing else really feels like armor. It's just like that. So um, then for gyro, it's pretty simple. You pull the helmet out and then you take this and you put it on the back. So it kind of goes, I think it's this way. I might be wrong. I'm not great at this. I actually haven't owned this for like longer than 24 hours, honestly. I just got it in the mail. So there you go. You put it there and then for whatever reason, instead of leaving it flat like I feel like it should be, the instructions show it out. So there's that. Before we put the helmet on, I do want to point out that for whatever reason the helmet is translucent and I don't know if that comes into play in future transformations with other Zords or whatever but you can see through it and that's kind of neat, but it doesn't really affect this. So you rotate the can, the camera, I was gonna say the camera or the candles, I don't know, I'm tired. Um, you rotate the cannons up and then you just pop it on. Now I'm gonna pull him up first. To me, I guess this is the cockpit and you can see his eyes, but for whatever reason, I feel like this should be a visor covering his eyes it's a minor nitpick, but it is what it is. So before I start to tear this thing apart, the coolest thing to me about it is I like that the weapons store on its body so you don't have to like worry about losing them if you don't want it to hold them. The problem with the pickaxe though is that you have to open it up, which is fine, you know, because that's how you would use it anyway. And there's a peg here and a little cross here, and they go into a peg hook here and a, just a little square space. <laughs> um, square space should give me advertising money for that. Um, so it's just like a little, it's not even a peg, it just kind of fits in there. And the same thing is on the shovel. So I do appreciate anything that incorporates weapons, like storage into the Zord. So I like that, that's something neat. But, so, there you go. You've got the Drive Max Megazord. Um, real quick, we'll go ahead and pull these off, even though I just put them back on. The shovel can go into this hand. The pickaxe can go into this hand. Or vice versa, you can do it either way. Um, like I said, I like the adventure treasure hunting theme, so... The fact that it's a pickaxe and a shovel, it's pretty cool. It fits the theme, um, you know. And if you want to do the finisher, you can combine these two into the Drive Max Saber. So you point this up um, and then there's little grooves here and then a hole in the pickaxe. And basically you just put it together and boom, you've got a sword. Now, when you put the sword back in its hand, it doesn't go any farther than that because of the cross I was telling you about. So on either hand, it'll be kind of long. And then if you're rotating it down, you might throw it out of his hand like I did. I do wish the shovel was kind of longer, but I guess they didn't want to like 
make it more of a sword, so it's fine. Um, when I display him, I'm actually going to keep the weapons on the side because I just like how that looks. But as far as the Megazord goes, like I said, I prefer it in the individual Zord forms on their own. There's not a lot of cohesion here. I feel like for especially the Racer and the Gyro, or the Speed Driver and the Gyro Driver, they kind of forgot that they needed to put them somewhere and incorporate into that, to the design. So that was a weird sentence, incorporate them into the design. So it's just like, oh, we're gonna snap it on the front and the back and it's done. I don't know. I don't like the color scheme very much. I don't like the wheels just being on the side. He does have some minor articulation just because of how the, the dump driver works. So you could make him run if you had some kind of coordination there. You can also fold these back in theory and give it some like balance, but you don't really need it. He's not particularly heavy. And most of his weight is in the center, so he's pretty well balanced. You can rotate his hands up and around. And like I said, you'll throw the sword, but it works on both sides. But this is kind of a eh, meh. I mean, I wanted it because I don't have any overdrive Zords, actually. I don't. This was the only one. So I was like, well, I'm going to get him because I want something. And I went with the Japanese one just because I think it looks better. I like the detailing. The, the gold paint isn't exactly metallic, but it's shiny. The chrome here looks better. The gold here looks good. And that kind of ties it together, but the rest of it doesn't tie together as well as I'd like. It just, it kind of looks like a mess to me. Maybe it'll grow on me. I don't know. But I got it complete for $70. I don't even know how much the American one would cost. I would hope not nearly that much. So it, it is used though, because there's a little, a few dings up here, but it is what it is. It's battle damage. It's fine. So... Not really one I would super recommend unless you were a completionist like I am or, you know, Operation Overdrive is your favorite season or one of your favorites or whatever. But I think we've done Vehicle Zords into a Megazord better than this before. And um, I just don't think this one comes together. We'll see how I feel when we get more of them and we can start making the bigger combinations. But I, just from what I've seen, I kind of think a lot of the designs are a mess, um, but we'll, we'll see. Sometimes I'll see them online or in pictures or from the show and I'll think, ugh, but then I get the them in hand and I end up liking them a lot more, which was the case for the Galaxy Megazord. I never liked it in the show, but in the toy form, it's awesome. So anyway, that's this. So thanks for watching. Um, feel free to check me out on Instagram at Old God Machinations and on Twitter at OG Machinations. Um, you can also feel free to like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube stuff. And until next time, I'll see you then. Bye.